<coughs> Y'all have your Bibles? Yeah. Did you just quit bringing them? All right, on your phone. That's awesome. It is a great, great, great day. I hope that you are doing well. If you're not, maybe the Lord will encourage you through the Word. I mean, I'll need a little encouragement. Every minute of the day. I'm always amazed at how low I can get in discouragement and depression and fear and anxiety. Anybody with me? It's amazing. It's almost like every day. And But also, the flip side though, quickly, what's the other amazing side of that? How, how God, what's He did? Man, He fills us with His Word and He pats us up in the chin and He says, get your head up. And it's, you know, I'm with you. So, so, so the downside is we're so human. The plus side is He's, he's so God. And, and these come together in a, in a collision in my heart just about every day. And I'm, I'm always ashamed that I really don't want to tell people just how low I am. And I've often wondered, you know, what's, what's the defect in my DNA? Why, why am I so, so human? But the more I talk to the men around me, I realize that they're very human too. And it makes me feel less ashamed. And, and we can all look at him and say, isn't he wonderful? And we can share with each other how, how he encourages us. And I want, I want to share with you what's one, what's one key way he's going to encourage us every day through the Word. Yeah. And this morning, uh, that's kind of what this message is about. How does the Bible change your prayer? Those are the two things that are going to come to collision today. The Scriptures and your prayer. I want to ask you, first of all, do you need any help with your prayer? If you're not careful, your praying is going to be kind of, oh, God, that, you know, that girl is so pretty. I would just love, 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 love to take her out. And what's, is that a bad prayer? Anything wrong with that prayer? Well, it does kind of have my own, yeah, my own my own whatever, hormones, <laughs> my own interests at heart. So today, as we, as we get into the Word and it begins to get in us, what's going to change? The level of maturity, maturity in my praying. The more His Word abides, the more eternal and supernatural and powerful my praying is. Everybody clear on that? If you don't like the topic and you want to leave, after that, you're stuck. That's what the verse is. Let's, let's read it. If our gentleman would put that up, John 15, 7. Picking up where Brother Kenny left, left off. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you ask whatever you wish, and it will be given unto you. There's a little, a little, a little danger here. What is it? Whatever I wish. What do I wish? Well, I mean, I wish I, wish I had money in the bank. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a preacher, you know. Those two don't really get it. No. But anyway, that's not really the point, is it? What do I wish? I, I wish my kids would do great. I wish my I wish my wife would. I, I hope my truck starts today. You know, and a lot of it can be very much about me. But what, what, what the Bible is saying is as, as you read and as you get saturated in the Word of God, His passions, which are what? His passions are not just my comfort. Sometimes I wish they were. His passions are not my pleasure. His passions are bigger and more eternal and more mighty and more world-changing and more awesome than mine. And he, 
He wants to see the same thing in me that I want to see in my kids. I want to see them get their eyes off themselves and get their eyes on a bigger thing that God is doing. It's only, going to, it's only going to happen one way. It's not going to happen because I tell you that today. It's going to happen because you are walking in the Word. Amen? And as you're walking in it, He's changing you. So if you're not being changed, don't blame God. Amen? He's giving you everything you need. I talked in the first service about being thirsty and hungry. Man, it doesn't take long. I'm, sorry, I'm hungry. I just had a bowl of Cheerios today. My wife didn't even fix me an egg. I don't know what to think about that. She knew I was preaching. She didn't fix me. I preached first sir. I haven't had a sip of water. I'm thirsty. Don't anybody go get me there. But you know what? After a while, I did ask for some coffee earlier. What happens in us when we get hungry and thirsty? Do we get we get cranky? Yes. Um it's a, it's a real thing to be thirsty, isn't it? That's the one you really have got to have, is water. When's the last time I thirsted for the Word of God like I thirsted after the last word? That's kind of what we're aiming at today. First of all, we're asking Him to increase our thirst for the Word. Uh, even though the Cubs made it in, they really weren't supposed to make it in. They were supposed to be the Dodgers, so get, get that to through a little bit, but as, as we abide, as Jimmy and I talked about a verse this week, Galatians 5 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also, does anybody know? Walk in the Spirit. So as, as Jesus is leading us, we can either be going that way, he's going that way, we can be going that way, he's going that way, or we can both be what? That's abiding. When I'm walking in step. Have you ever not walked in step before? That's pleasant, isn't it? Man, that's wonderful. All that, all that anxiety and depression. Galatians 5, 25. If, you, if we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. It's essentially saying the same thing. It's get in step with where the Lord is going. Get in step with what He is thinking. Get in step with His will. That's kind of the concept. I, I love, don't, don't look at John 14, 23, right prior to this chapter. Kenny's been talking a little bit about home. The Bible says, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home in him. How many of y'all want to be home with the Lord? I tell you, I'm 49. The one thing that I want to know from my kids is, are you home? <laughs> are you coming home? Are you having dinner with us at home? How important is home in my heart? Sometimes when I'm, I've, God bless, I've been in 10 different countries. God has allowed me that privilege, I guess. That's a privilege. Whenever I'm out, guess where I want to be? I don't care where it is. Some people think world travel is awesome and my hat's off to you. I don't want to be home. But I, want, I don't want to be home alone. I want, I want my family. Jesus used that analogy, didn't he? When, when, when you're out there wandering around in the filth and the mess, guess where you're not? You're not home. And the only way you're going to be home is walking in step with Him. God, what's your will? What's your desire? What are your commandments? Line me up with that. I would say to God, line me up with your commandments whether I want to or not. Do it by force. Get a hold of my little old scruffy neck. Shape me and put me along with your will. Let's walk step. That's how bad I want to walk in step. And that's the only way that feeling of home and things being right with Him is going to come. Sometimes we just, we just ask Him to do that. Two, two verses I've given you. Well, really three. This one. God would say, listen, it's not your desires really that I'm promising you. It's my desires. 
And as you abide and my word changes you, my desires and your desires are going to look very much alike. You're going to start worrying about spiritual things. You're going to start praying about spiritual things. And, and that's going to become your heart. More like, more like his. I want to ask you first of all this morning, do you want that? Do you want his words to transform your heart? You know, that's a little scary. Would anybody admit that? You know, I'm going to lose in that prospect. Maybe he won't let me have my hobbies anymore. Maybe he won't let me have that person anymore. If I begin to just say, Lord, your will. So that can be a little bit, a little bit of a fearful thing. Y'all, we talked a little bit about prayer. There's a lot of blessings besides answered prayer that come with walking in step with Jesus. Can anybody name one for you? What's a blessing? What's a fruit of walking in step with Jesus? Somebody name one for you. You know what? Um, I, I, patience. That's a hard one. <laughs> Could you, could you say that walking with Jesus has made you more patient? Anyway. Yeah, sure. And we all desperately need a little bit more of that. Though. Especially dads and moms. Is somebody going to give them what? <clears throat> peace. Okay, walking in Not fighting God gives a sense of peace. Yes. Some others. Oh. Yeah. Who said that? Yeah. Mr. Neal. Oh, amen. How many all need hope? I'm desperate for hope every day. Yeah, thank you. What was another? Kindness. How important is kindness? Uh, we, we, we need that. There's a lot of fruits that begin to exhibit themselves as we're walking in step with Jesus. I wrote down a few. First of all, uh, problem solving. How many all got problems to solve? What does God do? I'm always amazed. I laugh. Sometimes, you know, you get along with him, you pray, you spend time with him, and he's going out ahead of you. The stuff that you dread and you worry about, what's he out there doing? He's going before you. And as you get into these situations, you're like, uh-oh, God's been here before me. <laughs> he's already dealt with that heart. One of the blessings and fruits of abiding is problem solving. God's busy out there ahead of us. And, and, and you get home that day and you just feel like, oh my gosh, God, you did that. You did that. Thank you. <laughs> and it gives you confidence for the next day that guess what? He's going to be there again. And he's going to do that again. And you just get excited about God. You know what you're going. It all comes through abiding and walking. Problem solving. What about relationships? How many of y'all know when your spouse is not walking step to step? That's kind of a dangerous question, but I like the answer. Can we tell when our spouse is out of step with Jesus? Somebody raise your hand right there. Yes, all right. All right. I'm sure you can. But relationships work better when we're step, when we're abiding in Jesus, when we're abiding in His work. There's a humility that comes, there's a gentleness, there's a brokenness. Pride, which kills our families at home. What does God do with pride? He subdues it, He transforms it. How does He do it? He does it through the Word. So if you're not in the Word, guess what? You probably won't have to tell us that. If we're around you long enough, I don't mean to be judgmental. I'm sorry. I love you, but we're going to know it. And you're going to know it about me. You're going to need to come up to me and say, Chad, get in the Word. Get in the Word. Get on us here. That supernatural thing that God does through the living Word, guys, to transform my heart until I begin to talk like He talks. My desires are less about me and more. That's what he's after. A lot of blessings that come with abiding. Answered prayer is a big one. I wrote down servanthood. Somebody told me a few weeks ago that if, if somebody asks you to do something or they tell you to do something and you have that thing that happens in your heart, <clears throat> your wife says, hey, go turn the drawer off downstairs. You think, she didn't even say please. What's her problem? Y'all ever felt that? Come on. <laughs> you know what this person said as they were teaching? Like, if, if that breaks on me, you know what I've got? I've got, I've got, I've got a servanthood problem. I don't really, I don't, I don't really want to serve. I've been thinking about that. 
Now when my wife says, hey, would you, you know, I'm going, okay, I need to be a good servant here. Let me respond in a godly way. Instead of, <clears throat> there's, a, there's a lot of that, that that Jesus will transform in us, that needs to be transformed in order for marriages to work, employees, relationships with our bosses to work, all that kind of works through the Word of God. So if you're starving yourself and you're not thirsty and you're not hungry, I love you. That's part of the problem in your life. There is nothing, nothing, nothing going to take your place with the Word of God. That's good news and that's bad news. The bad news is, oh gosh, that's just so hard to, I have a hard time doing that. I understand. The good news is, as you do it, you're going to be transformed from the inside out. How many of y'all need transformation from the inside out? Every day. Isn't God funny? It's like the manna that He gave him in the Old Testament. It doesn't last until the next day. I wish it would. Oh, I got yesterday's power. <laughs> I got here in this white little Tupperware bowl. Yesterday's prayer power. I'm going to get it out. I'm going to bathe. No. When does it happen? Day by day by day by day. Because he wants to walk with you as I want to walk with my kids. How often? Moment by moment and day by day. Isn't that cool? Are y'all not just overwhelmed with the coolness of that? Not really. Would that not be the age, you know, as we get older? Sure, sure. Maturity. Guys, as we're growing in the Word, he's going to change uh, our desires. They're going to be more like his. Uh, when I'm going to the grocery store, um, grocery stores are interesting places, right? Uh, used to when I was a kid in the, in the 60s. I don't remember so I was a 60s guy. I do remember Bonson's was our court, and you went and you got this cookie. I don't know if they still do the free cookie thing. Does anybody know? When you were a kid, did anybody get free cookies at the grocery store? All right. Was it not the highlight of that whole shopping trip? I am going to get a cookie. Didn't ever know what kind of cookie it was going to be. Sometimes you thought, man, these people are really cheap because they were like with ginger snaps or something. Who in the heck wants a ginger snap? You know what I mean? You want something meaty with chocolate in it. <coughs> Nowadays, when you go to the grocery store, what are people trying to do? They're not enjoying the free cookie. Their heads are down. They're like, they're not get in the way. They'll run over your hind end. You gotta get it over. We stop reading each other, we stop loving on each other, we stop talking to each other, and you are no longer my brother at the grocery store, you are in my way. You know what I'm saying? Our own schedule, our own problems, our, when I'm thinking eternally, how does that change my trip to the grocery store? Quick, how does it, what does it do? Well, how about, hey, how, how are you doing today? What do y'all think about that at the grocery store? What are they going to do to you if you start greeting people and loving people at the grocery store? They're going to go well. Yeah, sometimes. But if I don't greet you and love on you, brother to brother, how am I going to encourage you if I don't speak to you and look at you? Well, I can pray for you, yes. But when I'm at the store, I can either say, okay, God, I've got to get this done. I'm, I'm, I've got my other things I'd like to do today to make this store. So get me through here, God. Just bless me. Make my schedule work today. Get me out of this store. Is that God praying or is that Chad praying? That's not God praying at all, is it? It's all about me. my schedule, my problems, my frustration. Now, how do I change? Let's just use the grocery store as a stupid example. How could that be abiding? answer prayer. How could that be? God, I pray for this senior adult that I'm passing right now, Lord. She looks like she's in pain. I, I hope I can push the cart as good as she can when I'm 89 years old. Lord, bless her. How are you doing today, ma'am? You know that little, not one time have I ever had a little lady say, get away from me, you mean person. <laughs> because old folks, they, they get it. I mean, you know what I'm saying? They get it. They're not, they can't rush much fast. You know what I'm talking about? Being mean. They got, you know, they don't have quite as much on the schedule. And for me to greet them and love them, and you know, maybe in some weird way, maybe I could pray for them either out loud or as I'm 
But how are we going to do that if it's about me and my schedule and my problems and my accomplishments? Here's what I'm saying to you today. God would say, listen, I want you to, I want you to desire what I desire. And I want to ask you, does God desire to encourage that senior adult down by the green beans? Does God the Father, is, is, that, is, is that his child down by the green beans? Yes, it is. And he loves her dearly. And for me to love her. It's him loving her through me. I'm just giving you a stupid example of everyday stuff that we are busy doing, and if we're not careful, it's just fleshly stuff or going through the motions of God would say, elevate it to the terminal things. And even if you can't speak the word to them, you can pray for them. And you can have the joy of the Holy Spirit upon you so that when they come up against you, they know something is truly different. So guys, that's, God, God would say, if you're in my word, and my words are in you, we're going to be desiring the same thing. And every conversation you have, be conscious of this. Is this about me or is this about him? And God would have us practice transforming those conversations and those actions till they jive, jive with him more than they jive with him. Is this easy stuff? Are y'all even listening? Are y'all with me? Yeah. This is not easy. You're never going to have the power to live apart from the Word. So the Word's got to get in there. Guys, I'm not, I'm not preaching to y'all. I'm preaching to myself. Because I need this more than you do. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm grateful for this stuff. Now, okay, Kenny goes to 12. So I got 40. Actually, brother, for laughing. I mean, you're the only guy in the whole thing. You're an encouragement, that's for sure. He's he's either laughing because I'm stupid, or he's laughing because he thinks I'm funny. I'm not sure. You'll never tell. All right. all right. How are we supposed to be praying? First of all, we, we we've talked about blessings that come with the Bible. Have you had any? As I will tell you, we'll we'll know when you're walking with. We'll know. You'll know what I'm talking about. It's his spirit just does spirit stuff out there, doesn't it? And, and there's a joy from this. There's a, there's a, a, a blessing on you. Your, your image of yourself is in the right place. I, I thought about the word dignity. You don't, even, you don't even use that word anymore. When I walk past you in the grocery store and I don't speak to you, it's because we have forgotten the inherent dignity of every human being out there. God would remind you of the dignity of the people that He has created. So many blessings that come with the body. In this passage, what's the blessing? And you're going to see answers to prayer in spiritual things that are going to make you go, oh my gosh. <laughs> Let me tell you what God did. And you're going to be either crying or laughing. You're just going to be excited because God did something. And you've got to be a part of it. God wants you to elevate your guys. He wants me to elevate, get my mind off myself and my problems. How many of y'all have a ton of them right now? Yeah. We're eaten up with problems. And we can grouse and complain and whine and cry. And I do all those things at least once an hour. Or I can be in the Word. Preaching to myself the Word of God. Letting that supernatural power transform my character, which desperately needs to change. My desires, all those things desperately need to change. It's going to happen one way. All right. Let's look at some praying in the Old Testament. Real quick, we got five of them. If you don't respond well, I'm going to go to six of them. I'm just kidding. I would pray God's will. I want, to, I, want to, I want you to look at the worst problem you've got in your life right now. We, we got some problems in our, in our house. We're just praying for we, we always have had problems, just like y'all. And y'all always stinking well. Amen? Every day. And sometimes they get so bad, you're going, are you mad? You know, here I am. I'm trying, you know, what, what is the problem? It's through the problems that God's trying to teach us this stuff. 
screw the problem so he's trying to pieces. Here we have Hannah. She wanted to be a mama. That first service really messed up all of us. We have Hannah. What was her uh, her desire? Her desire was to have a sweet little child. And somewhere in the notes. There she is. The Bible says in, in, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11. She was, well, verse 10 says she was in bitterness of soul and she was weeping. Uh, we'd all be weeping with her too if we were standing there with her, wouldn't we? We would just be crying with her. Uh, God made us that way. Aren't you glad <laughs> we're not robots? said, Lord, now I want to ask you, how is this praying that is abiding? Remember we said prayer that is abiding is what? It's much more about Him. It's much more about eternal things. much more, more about the world that's, that He has made out there. Listen to Hannah's prayer. She said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look at the affliction of your maidservant, I can't have a child. Would you remember me and not forget me? But will you give your maidservant a child? Then I will give him back to you. All the days of his life. He's going to be yours. So how is this an eternal prayer? God, and I, I, want, I want to live this way, and I want you to live this way. Everything you've given me, God, I do this to you. How is that eternal prayer? It's, it's, about, it's about you, God, and every, every beautiful... But what about my children? You gave them to me. I want to ask you this question. Are they really his? Yes or no? Every, 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 every hair. <laughs> they're, they're his, really. How does that change my praying to know that they are his? Father, would you, would you take this child of yours and shape their character, shape their heart, shape their mission? God, would you, you know. So number one, the first prayer that I want to remind us about is abiding prayer, a, a prayer that is more in line with God's heart, recognizes that He owns it all, it's all His. We don't have this my child mentality. How many of y'all have had a my child mentality in the past? That's, that's, my, that's my girl. Those are my girls. Now do I have responsibility toward those two children that God gave me? Yes. Many. They're not my girls. That's eternal thinking. They're, they're, they are soldiers in his army. What's Galatians 5 25 say? March in step with him. They're his. So, so change how I pray. Instead of just praying for their welfare, praying for their this, how do I how do I pray for them more eternally? That's kind of that's kind of the point. <coughs> Let's look at the second passage real quick. Uh, and that is actually Daniel. Guys, first of all, do you want to pray God's way? That's kind of the question today. I do, but I need to be trained in how to do that. Did anybody get trained by Hannah's prayer? God, it's all yours anyway. Help me not to be so whatever I am. My kids, they're your kids. Second example, Daniel's prayer. Now remember, Daniel... I set my, uh, verse 3, uh, Daniel chapter 9, excuse me, verse 3. I set my face toward the Lord to make requests by prayer and supplication. What was Daniel doing here? Somebody tell me. Wake up. He was praying. How was he praying? The Bible says with fasting, sack, sackcloth, and ashes. How was Daniel feeling? He was, this was serious, serious, serious stuff. I prayed to the Lord. I made confession. And I said, Lord, how great and awesome you are. You keep your covenant of mercy with those who love you, with those who keep your commandments. We have sinned and committed iniquity. I want to ask you, is this a prayer that God is going to answer? Any prayer, what do you, what do you, what do you call this kind of prayer? Prayer of, yes, God, I, I am undone, Lord, in my sin. Anybody, anybody undone in your sin in this room today? Is 
God, I'm going to answer that prayer when you begin to get contrite and right and say, Lord, I'm, I'm wrong. And not only I'm wrong, but those around me are wrong. We're all, we're all messed up, God, and we need, we need a fresh start. I want to confess to you, Daniel, who probably, of anybody I've ever read in the Bible, is right back at the top of the hero list. But he didn't say, hey, I'm a hero. The rest of y'all are pagans, but I'll pray for you. No, what did he say? We. So when you are praying eternally, you're not just confessing your sins. You are praying for the sins of your family. You're praying for the sins of your church. And what else? What else? Who's else sins need to be forgiven? How about America? How about our nations? And you're, and you're just beginning to confess. I want to ask you this question. Will God forgive you through that prayer of confession? So two types of things you've already said this morning. Hannah's prayer. God, everything is yours. So I just, you know, I don't, I don't cling to it. I don't own it. it. It's yours. And I pray that you would use it for your glory. Daniel's prayer, Lord, forgive us. We're desperate for your forgiveness. But look down all the way down now at verse uh, 19. Why is God going to hear Daniel's prayer? Because Daniel was not just praying about himself. He was praying. Here's what he says. Verse 19. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, listen. Don't delay. I hope it says it up there. What's the next three, three words? Four words. Don't delay for your own sake. Guys, are you praying for your sake? Or are you praying for his sake? Ask yourself that question this week and let's work on this together. Amen? Examine your prayer. Is it about you or is it about what he's about? That's kind of what this whole sermon's about. Uh, Hannah's prayer was to take this child and raise him for your sake. Daniel's prayer was, forgive us. Why? For your sake. Let's look at another prayer quickly. And that is Habakkuk. I haven't met many people named Habakkuk. We all, anybody ever know about Habakkuk? Y'all have a name for your kid. Okay, I'm throwing, just throwing that out <laughs> We could call him, what, what could we call him for sure? Heavy? I don't know. Backy. Yeah, there you go. All right. Um, Backy. Uh, for some reason, that name never really come on, but that's okay. Um, Chad never called on either. You know what I'm saying? I've got one Chad in my life. I really, I really want to, I want us to look at eternal praying in a back experience. I want us to look at how it's not for his sake. How it's for God's sake. Now, how's your praying doing? And I'm not giving you a hard time. I'm asking. Maybe God would say, okay, here's how, here's how I want you to pray. In, in, in Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17, this is the way some of y'all feel about your life right now. Though the fig tree may not blossom, I'm on verse 17, Habakkuk chapter 3, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the, and the fields yield no food. Have you ever just had sheer panic come over you as you looked around at the magnitude of whatever it is that's coming against you, whether it's financial or health, and you're going, oh my God. I mean, you even had a hard time breathing. Anybody ever had a panic attack because of problems with that? And you're going, oh my God, this is, uh, I'm, I'm not built for this. <laughs> my ship can't, can't handle this wind. This man, there is absolutely not one thing he can look at, and look at and say, this is good in my life. There's not a fig hanging on the, on the tree. There's not one, not one daggone cow left in the stall. Though the flock be cut off from the fold and there be no herd in the stalls. It's barren and empty. Now, how could this guy be praying if he's not abiding how could he be praying for his sake? Yeah, life, life really stinks right now. You have given me a stinky life. And I 
hate it. And until you shape it up, things are going to be bad. Is that what Habakkuk says? I want to ask you, can you praise and pray and talk to God when there's no sheep in the fold? Can you praise and sing and love Him when there's not a fig hanging on the daggone fig tree? I want to ask, what kind of praying is that? Is that mature praying when you can pray? You're not looking at the blessings that it's holding out, but instead you're just looking at Him. We are guilty. I am guilty. You are guilty of just looking at the blessings and saying, thank you, Lord. What if they're all gone? How are you going to do that? I'm not giving you a hard time. I'm asking. And I'm asking myself. You know, Habakkuk teaches, I hope you never forget Habakkuk chapter 3. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. God, you're my joy no matter what is there, no matter what is not there in my life. You are my joy. Not my kids, not my job, not what I drive, not my talents, not my hair, not my age, not my skills, nothing but you. And you will always be there. So I will always have something to joy. Hey, if you want to pray that way, first of all, abide. Walk in step with him and let the, let the word of God become a greater part of your day. I love that. I, I'm transformed. By Habakkuk 3. Lord, you are my strength. You will make my feet like deer's feet. And you will make me walk. But it doesn't look like anything is going right. You just remind God of who he is and what he's going to do. Because he's done it in the past. And more importantly, his word says he's going to do it. That's the true prayer. That's the kind of prayer I need to grow in. <laughs> Sometimes I look at the blessings or the lack thereof and I go, hmm. Y'all <clears throat> have done that to God? <clears throat> Where are you at? Why are you left me in this quagmire that I'm in? You know what the back says, man. Oh, I'm going to rejoice in you, Lord. Guys, I want us to make a commitment that's kind of, kind of personal. Lord, no matter what happens, I'm going to sing my joy. I'm not going to look at, at, at it. I'm going I'm to look at you. I'm not going to look at it. I'm going to look at you. And I'm going to sing. Speaking of singing, let's move to number four. Anybody excited? Yeah. excited? Hey, I got, we got roast beef in the house, so don't give me lunch. It's on high. I'm a little concerned. Are the potatoes getting too done? So I, I got personal stake in how long this preacher goes today. Okay, so relax. Number four. How, how do we pray? Well, how did Hannah pray? God, this, this child, it's for your sake. How did Daniel pray? Oh, God, forgive us. We need it. For your sake. For what you're going to do. Um, look at, look at, look at um, Jehoshaphat. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Guys, this is, if, if they could make a movie, this would be it. Don't know why they haven't found this, this passage yet. Jeho Jehoshaphat had the Moabites, the Ammonites, and a new, a new group that just got added this week that I had never met before. They're called the Meunites. Look them up. They're real people. They're called the Meunites. That's what the problem that some of us have. It's, it, we're all Meunites. Right? That was kind of stupid. But anyway, the Moabites, the Ammonites, and the Meunites were gathered around the people of God. And Jehoshaphat, he was the leader. And it was hopeless. Here's what he says. Jehoshaphat stood at the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. And he said, hey guys, I've got a plan. I've got all this together. We're going we're gonna to whip these guys because we've got more men than they have. Is that what he said? No, they didn't have anywhere near the number. He said, because I have a military mind, and I am a very smart man, and I will guide us through this calamity. Is that what he said? You guys know what God wants from you? First of all, he wants your problems. Why? Because he's, 
He's glorified when we give him our problems and he works them out and then we glorify him. He, he's a father. <clears throat> Please don't say, oh, he's, he's, you don't want my own problems. That's just pride on your part. Amen? <laughs> Jehoshaphat demonstrates something pretty awesome here. And, I, and we close. I'm done here. As soon as we get done with old Mr. J. J. O. here. He said, oh, Lord, are you not God in heaven? Don't you rule over all the kingdoms? He kind of sounded a little bit like the guy who just got that read a minute ago. In your hand, is there not power so that no one is able to withstand you? All right, so everything's going wrong. He's got massive problems. What does he do? First of all, he begins to what? Starts with a P. He begins to pray. I mean, how, how are you doing there? Are you so proud that you've forgotten how to pray? I'm not being mean. I'm just saying some of us are pretty proud, aren't, aren't we? We charge into our stuff head, head to head. Christians don't do this out there, guys. We don't run into head to head. They may be coming to us, and what are we doing? We're praying. We're, in, we're, 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 we're his children. <laughs> He's going to fight the battle, not us. Jehoshaphat probably scared to death in his flesh. I know I would be. He says, verse 7, Are you not our God? You drove out the inhabitants of the land before your people. They dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary for your name, saying, If disaster comes, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence. Now, why? Here's, here's the thing. For what? For your name's sake. So Jehoshaphat already knows that what God has done in the past has been for whose sake? His own. Is God going to stop working for his sake? No. Never. <laughs> Because he's the only sake that matters. Ultimately, my, for my sake, Chad Rittenhouse, I'm here for how long? I'll probably make it to 110 because I eat a lot of vegetables. That's not really a long time, is it? So for Chad's sake, it really doesn't matter in the big scheme of things. But for his sake, it really does matter in the big scheme of things. Though. Sure it does. So he's always working for his sake. The question is, are you going to partner with him for his sake? Does that make sense? So you're praying, God, is this for your sake or is it for mine? That's the question I want you to ask this week and I want to be asking myself. Am I doing what I'm doing for my sake? Am I doing what I'm doing for his sake? And here's the thing we've got to do. God, change my sake away from my sake to your sake. Okay, I promised you all I'll close here right here. Verse 10, now here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you would not let us destroy. Jehoshaphat said, man, we had a shot at these guys, and you wouldn't let us do it. Now they're invading us. They, they turned. They, we turned from them. We didn't destroy them. Look at verse 11, and here they are. Guys, some of y'all today may feel like you're surrounded on three different points. <laughs> Ammonites, the Moabites, and the Meunites. You're going... I'm here today, don't really think I'm going to be alive tomorrow. Things are so bad. Here they are, rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. Oh, our God, will you not judge them? We have no power <coughs> against this great multitude, nor do we even know what's he say. Don't even know what to do. But our eyes are on you. You know, you know what great leadership is? I love it. Great leadership is, I can't do it, and I really don't know what to do. <laughs> I hope your marriage is running that way, because guess who you're going to be depending upon if you're not depending upon yourself? God! If you're going to marry a man who says, hey, I got this, I'm going to leave. <laughs> He's just full of, full of uh, uh, tamales, isn't he? you got to, you got to be at the end of yourself before you realize, hey, there's a mighty God who's going to pick us up. That's it. Now, you know what he does? The strangest thing, please read this passage. You know, he, he appoints these sinners. And he just had them go out and begin to sing. And then, guess who showed up? Because of the sounds coming out of the mouths of his people. God showed up. And he began to fight with his fellow. When I am singing in the midst of being surrounded on three mountaintops by the Moabites, the Ammonites, and the Meunites, when I am singing unto the Lord, what am I saying? God, first of all, this is your battle. 
I don't have any power. I don't even know what to do. That's your battle. And you're going to win it because it's for your sake. We are your people. We are your children. I am your child. And you're going to win this for your own sake and your own glory. Guys, change our prey away from my sake to what? Build, build our lives so that we are marching step by step. Galatians 5.25. Living in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit. We're walking along. There's harmony there. Now, if you get out of step, is that my job to come and talk to you a little bit about that? Yes or no? I'm anxious to see the answer to this. Yes, sir. Uh, I come up to you with a real sense of, hey, I'm going to kick my brother in the hind because he's out of step with Jesus. I got it. No. I come up to you very humbly and privately and gently and say, we're really kind of talking about something. So we, we keep each other in step, don't we? How many of y'all need that? We are the body of Christ. Some of y'all are an armpit, some of you are an ankle, some of y'all are a wrist, some of y'all are a finger, but guess what we are? We are the body. And we all need to be abiding, walking in the Word. Because when you're not, guess what it does to the body? Does it have an impact? Yes, it is. That's good. That's good. All right.